Hi everybody, this is Katisha and welcome to Kitty Crow Creations. We are going to start another acrylic painting tutorial. We're on day two of our 14 day at Valentine's Day acrylic painting. Um, this is what we'll be painting today, this adorable puppy with the rose and the heart-shaped cloud. Uh, this is day two. Uh, we've already done day one. Day one was the, the wine and rose acrylic tutorial. I hope you had a chance to do that. And if you have had a chance to do that painting, go ahead and share some of them on uh, my YouTube channel so we can so we can take a look at them and, and you know share share our enjoyment and enthusiasm about painting. Okay. So if you want to know about future videos, because as I said, this is day two of the 14 days of Valentine's Day of acrylic painting, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification button so that way you'll know when the videos are going to be uploaded. Okay, uh, I have a description of all the materials you'll need for this painting tutorial. I'm not gonna list all of them. I'm not gonna talk about them all right now, but what I'll do as I'm painting, I will tell you the colors that I'm mixing. And um, let's go ahead and get started. First things first, we will be painting on an 11 by 14 um, canvas. And this is a this is a, a student grade canvas. You can get these in Michaels or you can get them in Hobby Lobby. They're very inexpensive. Eventually, as you progress in your painting, you want to endeavor to try to invest in some more, you know, more higher grade canvases. But for right now, this will definitely work for you. The first thing we're going to do, as I mentioned in my last video, we're going to sand it. And by sanding the canvas, what it does, it allows the, the paint to adhere a little bit better because a lot of times these student grade, um, these student type of canvases soak up a lot of your paint and you don't want that. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna sand it a little. So I just sand it a little bit so it's, just sanding a little bit so it's smooth. And then that should allow the paint to get on there really well. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start. My brushes I'm using today are a number, this is a number one Simply Simmons um, bright brush and I'm using a eight inch flat brush and a, a four inch flat brush. So that's what we're gonna be using. And I also have a script liner brush that I'm gonna be using for some detail. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna dip my brush in water just to loosen it up a little bit. And on my canvas right now, I have ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, cad red medium, and titanium white. I'm gonna mix those colors together. And I'm gonna start my sky. So I'm just gonna get some of those and mix them together. Try to put as much paint on there as I possibly can. And this is gonna be the background. Get some of that white, mix that in there. I'm gonna just put a little bit more ultramarine blue in there. I'm gonna put a little water. I'm using Matisse professional grade paints, but you can use student grade paints. I, I highly recommend if you're gonna start off inexpensively, use the, um, the basics, the Liquitec basics paints. Those are really good. I started off with most of my paintings on 16 by 20s using um, Liquitex Basics and I produced some, I, I felt were some pretty decent paintings. So here we go. We're going to just go back and forth. I'm going to make that a little bit darker. I put, what I did, I just put in some phthalo blue because I want my sky to be a little bit darker at the top because what we're going to do, we're going to add white to it as we go down. And see how it's it's struggling to get the paint on there. I'm gonna I'm gonna add a little water. Do you want that paint on that that canvas? As a matter of fact, just let me go ahead and use. I'm just I'm mixing some more of this. I'm using all of it. I just mixed more of the ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, and cad red medium. I'm gonna get some more white. Now we're talking. Got to put some paint in that brush. <clears throat> and my 
my paint is kind of thick, so. Okay, so I have my dark part up here. Now I'm just gonna reach into some of the titanium white and I'm just gonna spread that on there like that. And as I go toward the bottom, and then when I get up here, I'm gonna lightly, lightly blend it because you're trying to bring that color down. It's like a blending effect. I'm just gonna barely go across it like that. get some more white and keep going down I'm get some water because that's that's having a hard time getting onto that canvas and we get some more of the dark because the white too much white up here. I want to bring that that color downward. And you're just trying to get a blending effect. It doesn't it doesn't have to be perfect. In no way does it have to be perfect. But you definitely you definitely want some color on there. And when I come back here, I'm just going to time to time I'm you can also use a blending medium the blending medium will help the it will help the paint go on a little bit better and allow you to blend your colors together a little bit better as I get further to the bottom I'm using less and less of the blue color and more of the white I always find this blending method a little bit relaxing. You can't go wrong with the bl with blending, uh, taking a couple of colors and blending them all the way down from you know from dark to light. Let's see what I'm doing. I'm coming all the way down here. And you, you really should paint your sides. I'm not gonna do my side, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna do my sides, but you really wanna to try to do the sides of your canvas. It just gives it a better effect. Paint whatever paint. Since most of this background is blue, I would put some blue on the, on the sides. All right, so we got our blended sky. Pretty awesome, huh? Now, see what I just did? I just went try to go back over that. It feels kind of sticky. And when it gets dry, when it starts getting sticky like that, I would just leave it alone and try to come back later and put some more color on it. But we're gonna go ahead and move forward. And when I put the other details on it, you won't even be able to see that in the background anyway. So we're gonna take this time. I'm going to clean out my brush and my water. Acrylic dries really fast. So if it's drying fast on your, your palette, is definitely drying fast in your brush. So you wanna to try to get some of that paint out of there as quickly as you can. And that's what I'm doing. And if you're wondering what I'm doing on my lap, I'm not wiping my paint on my clothes. <laughs> I'm actually, I actually have these old towels. You can use paper towels if you want, but I prefer to use these old towels because they soak up a lot of paint, a lot of water, and that's great. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and blow dry this. Okay, here we go. I hope everybody is having a great Saturday. It's a three-day weekend for most people. How nice. Perfect time to get a whole bunch of paintings done. So at this stage, you should be drawing your canvas.
Okay, that's dry enough. So, so I'm rubbing it. I don't, let me see. That paint came from something else. I don't think it's from this. So it looked like, I think we're good. So what we're gonna do now, I have Sorel transfer paper and I'm going to transfer my image onto my, my um, canvas. Now, if you want to freehand it, you can. And then perhaps in another tutorial, I will show you how to freehand images onto the canvas. But we want to focus on painting and not drawing. So we're just going to transfer the image on there. I have downloaded uh, the link in the description that will show you where you can find the reference photo and where you can also find um, the, the traceable. Let me, show you, let me show the original. I'm going to show you. This was the original reference photo. I'm not sure if you can see it. So that's what we're working on. So I have that downloaded onto my Pinterest website and you can go there and print the traceable and the reference. So let's go ahead. First thing I'm gonna do, that image, we want it right in the corner. So I have it right there. We want it right, right in the corner. So what I'm going to do, I want the dark part facing the back. I chose red for this one because when I tried to do a, a practice run on this, it, um, the, I used yellow and yellow didn't show up very well. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to tape that down a little bit. I'm using, this is, painter's tape. I use painter's tape when I'm doing my acrylic paintings because they come off better. So I'm just getting that in the corner so I can get the dog transferred on. I'm going to get as close to that edge as I possibly can. And so right about there. And then what I transferred on with is just a regular blue pen. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to start down here and just start tracing. And you should be tracing too, just to get an idea where everything is. Let's make sure it's adhering to the, to the, yep, that's perfect. And I hope that comes out right because I just moved it and I probably shouldn't have done that, but oh well, we'll make it, we'll make up for it when we do the actual painting, when we add the color. Doesn't have to be perfect, you're just trying to get an outline. You know, I've always been fascinated with, with painting. And I think about when I do a lot of reading about the old um, masters who painted like in the 1800s and in the 1700s and things like that, they had to like hand made their paints, but their, their paintings were phenomenal. So even though they may have been exhausted making their own paints, they still had these beautiful, vibrant, vivid, paintings, which I'm, I'm just always amazed. So since we have all the resources available to us, let's, let's take advantage of it. We don't have to go out and buy our paints. I mean, make our paints. We have Michael's. We have Hobby Lobby. Another place that I didn't mention is Jerry's Artorama. Oh, I love that place. Jerry's Artorama, it, uh, they have everything you need for painting, everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. You really don't have to put the nostrils on there, but I'm putting them anyway. Okay, and the plan is for this to be a painting under two hours. And, and just just so you know, the more details your, your uh, detailed your paintings are, the more the, the longer it's going to take. Plain and simple. That is pretty common sense. Okay, I'm almost done, and then we can get to, down to the painting. I just thought this little rose was so cute in the dog's mouth.
If you have any questions or, cons you know, any questions or comments, just remember to put them in the, um, the comment section and I will get to them as soon as I can. Oh, that came out really good. That's exactly the way I wanted it. Perfect, perfection. We're done doing that. Now we get to have the real fun. Yay. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna paint the dog. Let me tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna paint the dog, then we're gonna paint the cloud, then we're gonna paint the rose. Let me tell you a little bit about painting animals or even people. If you want your, if you want your painting or your subject to be lifelike, you're gonna have to have layers upon layers upon layers of color. So when I first do this, you're, probably, you're gonna see me start off with dark, and then you're gonna see me start off with another layer of semi-dark color, and then a lighter color, until I eventually get to the highlights of the fur. That's just the way it is, it's a process. So let's go ahead and get going. So for this one to do the fur, it's called a base coat, or underpainting. My underpainting, the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna be burnt umber and, um, uh, burnt umber and doxazine purple, and ultramarine blue. So let me go ahead and take out some Burn number, because I want a dark, dark brown color. And then after that dark brown color, a less dark, lesser dark version of the brown, and then so, and so on and so on. I'm just gonna put my ultramarine blue back in the ultramarine blue spot. And then I'm gonna get some doxazine purple. How interesting, I have not opened this one yet. But I'm gonna open it now. Oh, see, now it's open. It wasn't open before. I really hope some of you get a chance to paint some of these paintings. I know that um, they might look a little bit intimidating, but the, the best way that you can be a good painter is that you just have to get, you just have to get in there and you have to paint. I know that when I first start painting, I literally observed the, observed the painting like for a whole day until I picked up the canvas. It's not until I picked up the paintbrush and the canvas and started painting that I actually fall more in love with painting and then actually produce a painting. So you just have to get in there and start doing it. Okay, I'm gonna start with my, sorry, I didn't mean to sling that, but I'm gonna start with my flat brush, my eight inch flat brush. I'm going to mix, I have here my ultramarine blue and I'm gonna make some doxazine purple. Look how rich and luscious that is. Okay, I'm probably gonna put a little touch of ultramarine blue. Now I have a super dark brown color and that's what I want. Because if you look at the reference photo, you look at the picture, there is um, a lot of dark spots. And when you're, when you're trying to paint animal colors, you wanna look for the darkest color under Neath all that fur to get started. So I'm going to go ahead and start painting that. I think I'm going to put a little bit more, a little more burn umber, a little bit water to that. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to try to go in the direction of the fur. And I'm trying to keep my lines because I want to, know where I am. So just go ahead and follow the, the lines. Yeah, when I when I paint animals or their fur, I just you, when you look at that, when you look at the painting, you're thinking to yourself, "Oh, that animal has white fur. I'm just going to start off with white." No, we don't start off with white. You start off with the color that's underneath the fur. Okay, I'm mixing more burnt umber, but I'm mixing more burnt umber and ultramarine, and I'm going to put it underneath here because in the reference photo, if you see, there's more dark. It's a dark, dark, dark color under here. And don't get don't get scared. It's going to look weird at first. I, I promise you it's going to look weird at first, but it'll come together. 
I did this painting twice and with this the same the same method and just know that your first layer is going to be weird looking. Now I'm going to come up here to this part. I'm going to actually make this little part right here darker because that's, I'm mixing some burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And I'm going to come here because that's a shadow. And I'm going to come over here because this is a shadow. Just going to go ahead and get that out the way right now. I'm probably going to go over top of my rose, but that's okay. I'll come back later. Okay, so I can put that down now. I'm gonna get a little water. I'm mixing more burnt umber. When, when you run out of paint on your canvas, on your uh, palette, put mix mix some more paint. You're gonna use paint. If you want if you want your stuff to look like anything, you're gonna, I know I've said this before, and I know it sounds repetitive, but if you want it to look like anything, you're gonna to have to put some paint on it, on your canvas. It's just the way it is. Okay, I'm gonna go kind of in a swirly motion right here because that's the way the fur is. And this one's just kind of coming down. So that's the way. Because you want to make your painting in the direction of the fur. Gonna get some more paint or get some water and use the paint I already have because I still have lots of paint here. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna come and put some in here. I'm gonna go this direction because that's looks that's the way the fur is going. I'm kind of just scrubbing in colors now because we're going to add more color over top of it. So I've got that. Putting some up here. Okay, so I'm going to get out some burnt sienna. I remember oh, there it is. From time to time, if you see me looking in that direction, I'm looking at my my um, my reference, and also looking at well, basically just some of my reference. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of bird sienna right here, just a little bit, because when you get into here, it's it's the next shade of the color. And then I'm gonna put some over here. And you're probably saying, how do I know what colors to put on put on the dog? I when I did when I looked at the painting, I looked really hard at the at the colors that were in the dog. And and keep in mind the white fur, the reason why it has so many colors is um, capturing the reflections from the things around it, like the blue from the sky probably some green from the from the 
the leaves of the, the rose and the red from the, the rose petal. So I'm going to put a little bit over here too. I'm going to put some over here. And I'm just looking for the colors that I think I see under the white fur. That's what I'm doing. In a minute, you're going to see me put some, some blue in here because on some of this, I saw some blue. I want to kind of keep that dark though, right there, because that's, that part is dark. Now I'm going to get some yellow ochre. Because you look at the dog, he has a little bit of yellow ochre there. And then I'm also going to put some blue down here and on the, on the sides. Because if you look at that reflection, you can see some of that in there. I still have some of the, some of the burnt umber in my my brush when I'm in the yellow ochre and I'm going to keep that. So the, the dog has, I see some of that yellow ochre in here. So I'm going to put some of that in there. And it's mainly on the tip of the, of this ear. And then there's also some, some of it right here. There's a lot of it right here, of that, that yellow ochre. some right here and I'm kind of just dry brushing some of this on here I'm not really even putting um, a whole bunch of paint just dry brushing it this is a yellow ochre and some more of that burn umber in here I'm gonna put some some over here because I see some over here And also I'm going to put some up here. I forgot to mention on the camera is my niece Octavia. Say hi, Octavia. Hello, everyone. She is trying to make sure that everything gets zoomed in properly so you can get a good picture and so you can see what's going on. So thank you, Octavia. Okay, I know this sounds crazy, but in this in this uh, fur, I also saw a little bit of blue, and that's probably the ref that's probably the reflection from the sky. And it's interesting; I saw it right in here, so I'm going to put some of it. So I'm putting it right there. Just dry brushing. And I saw a little bit of it over he over here. And by the way, my light source is coming from this direction over here. It's going like that. All right. And I saw some of that blue up here. Let me, let me mix some more. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I am mixing a little bit of ultramarine blue, titanium white, and some of my uh, brown mixture that I have. Ultramarine blue, the, the brown mixture I have, and titanium white to get that blue effect on where I, where I see it. I'm putting some right there because that's where I see it and I see a little bit right there and it's going to look really really awesome when you start putting the fur over top of it because you have all these different layers of color and it what it is is the reflection so I'm going to put some more over here I see some over here too all right I'm just going to go back and put some more of this dark color Okay, now I'm going to put in the eyes and the nose, and then we'll put in the we'll put in the fur. 
Rinsing out, rinsing out my brush. That's kind of cool, huh? Isn't awesome it's starting to look like a dog? And we don't even have the fur yet. Okay, I am taking out some Mars Black. You can also use Carbon Black if you want to, but I'm using Mars Black because I like it better. And we're gonna put in the nose and the eyes. I'm putting in the nose, the nose, nose. Shape, the nose is shaped like a heart. So if you wanna draw some of this stuff, just remember the nose is shaped like a heart and then it's little Mouth comes out right here. I'm gonna dry brush some of this on here. His mouth. Then I'm gonna get a little bit of titanium white. I'll make a little shadow right here so you can see the nose. Wipe off, gonna wipe off some of my paint. And if that's too wet, we'll come back in a minute and do it over, which it looks like it is, so we might have to. I'm doing this the the um, highlight so you can see the 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 dimension of the nose. So and I'm not right now I'm just dry brushing. You see me wiping off some of my paint so I can make sure I have a dry brush effect. Okay, now I'm gonna try to make a little nostril right here. So like a little circle. You know what, I'm not even gonna risk it. I'm gonna let that dry and I'll come back to it. But at least we have the little highlight and then we'll come back and do the nostrils. Let's do the eyes. That's why I say I like these um, angle brushes. You can use the tip of it. You can use the sides of it. I just love them. So I encourage you that once you do this dog, I hope, you, and I honestly hope you're able to do this. Once you do this dog, that you'll go out and try to endeavor to do more, paint more dogs. I'm hoping that's the case. I think that would be great. All right. Okay, so now the magic's gonna happen. I'm gonna let that dry. We, ha we have the eyes in there. Before I do that, I'm just gonna do this really fast. I'm just gonna come around and outline this nose. And this is, I still have to outline it some more. I'm just outlining it for right now so we can see that it's visible. I'm trying to get this paint off my brush so I can try and brush it on there. I'll come back to that. That's still wet. Okay, so now we're going to start our first layer of our fur. Our first layer of our fur is we're going to mix some yellow ochre and some titanium white. And it's a little bit of burnt sienna. And I think I'm gonna put a little bit of burnt umber in there because I don't want it too light just yet. Put a little bit of burnt umber in there. There we go. 
Okay, make sure that your water, your paint is not thick because you want to make, you want to make brush furs. Okay, now when you look at the reference photo, you notice that some of the, some of the dog's fur is like in curls and some of it's just straight down. Follow whatever the angles are. So I know here that, that there are, there's angles. I mean, not angles, but they're, they're lines. And so that's the layer, the direction that my brush is going. And then it's, it's kind of swooping over here. And then I'm going to use the tip here and just kind of make little wavy things. You can actually, you can actually use different colors of brown tones underneath for the for the for the um, underpainting of this and then over here it's kind of going like this swooping up and this one's this one's coming down let me put some more paint on there And remember, try not to use all, try not to, to color all of the dark color that you, that you work so hard to achieve in the background. You want to keep some of that. And so his fur is coming down like that here. And he's got some coming right here. And then this kind of comes off like that. I'm gonna put a little bit of water in there because it's it's not streaking the way I want it. Okay, so this goes like that. It doesn't have to be super perfect because you'll make up for it when you start putting the highlights. So I'm just kind of swerving it out and there's some right here and then this kind of just kind of comes up like this he's got little swirlies right there So now we're going to come down here and do I'm just going to do like little swirls. Let me get some of this paint out of my brush. Okay, some little swirls. And try to use some of, leave some of that, like I said, leave some of that dark color underneath here. I'm not making these straight because if you look at the painting, these are more like little curls. Try to leave little pockets of the dark in there. That is layer one. So now I'm going to do layer two. Layer two is going to be more of a, like a, 
more of like a um, combination of blue and titanium white. And I might put a little brown in there too. As a matter of fact, I know I'm going to put a little. I'm going to put a little burnt umber because we're getting closer to the light, the lighter colors. And let me make sure I put plenty of paint in there because we're going to, have to use a lot of it. And this is the color that I'm getting. I think I put a little bit more blue in it. And some more white because we're moving toward the highlight color. Right, there we go. Like I said, the more layers you put, the, the better it'll look. Here we go. I remember when I was little, I had a little, I had a dog. Um, how was I? I think I was, I don't know, three, four, I can't remember, maybe two. I'm sure I was probably three or four because I'm not sure that we can remember stuff that, that happened in our life when we were two years old. But I was learning my colors and I couldn't, I couldn't remember my colors and I had a black dog and I couldn't remember, as I said, my colors, so I named it blue. I just thought that was so cute. Okay, so you see how it's starting to look more like our dog. And then I'm going to try to come around the edge of this, make it a little bit more, the nose a little bit more defined. There we go. So now we can see the nose. The nose knows. I'm going to put little dots right here, like little swirlies, because it, his hair is, is kind of like fluffy right here in this part. And he's got, he's got hair all in his eyes. If, I mean, fur all in his eyes if you look at him. He's so, this little dog is so cute. And I'm going to come up here and put some more swirlies, because this is all fluffy up here. And you see how I'm using my... My brush, I'm just trying to swirl it. Honestly, for this painting, the majority of your time is going to be you trying to do the, trying to, trying to paint the dog. And it's just trying to get the fur in there. Because once you get that done, you're pretty, you're pretty much almost done with the painting. What do I want to call him? What do you think we should call him, Tavia? His name? Biff? Biff is cool. Biff. Unique. I was watching um, yesterday the O's Shaggy is it Shaggy D.A. or the Shaggy Dog? I, I love that. I just love those. I, well, I love all Disney movies. I just have always loved Disney movies. All the classics. And I want to put 
your mind at ease. When you're painting and you have a reference photo or even watching me, or even in my case, this is the third time I've painted this, they're not always gonna come out exactly the same and they should not come out exactly the same because each time you have an interpretation of what, what it is you're drawing. So everybody's painting is gonna look different. I most certainly hope your painting does not look like mine. but then it should be unique to you, your painting. I mix, I'm just mixing some more paint. Some more ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and titanium white. Okay, so we got that. Now we're going, to, I'm just gonna put a little bit more right here. Make it look. And I'm probably gonna come back and put some more dark in here in just a little bit because this part is supposed to be dark. Okay, so now we're gonna go put some over here. Making sure I go all the way out to the edges with the little fluffies. And if you're doing this painting, you give yourself a hand clap because it's not one of the easiest paintings, but it sure is fun. I will tell you that. I don't know this. He looks more like a Ralph. He doesn't look like a Biff. He looks like a Ralph to me. Hang in there, we're almost done with the dog. If you wanna just watch the video, just, just watch it all the way through and then just come back and paint it later. That's something you can do as well. Way to go, Ralph. That's Ralph. Yay! So we've done that layer. I'm really fast. I'm going to mix some um, some more ultra, uh, some more burnt umber ultra, ultramarine blue. Mix it up really fast because I want to put my dark areas back in there because they disappeared. So that's what I'm getting ready to do. When you have shadows and highlights in your paintings, they'll make them look more more realistic. And then that dark part disappeared here too. So I'm just gonna come back and put it in. Let me see, I've got too much paint on there. Let me get some of that paint off. I'm gonna put some of the dark back up here too. And then there was some over here that we lost. I want to put that back. Those are decisions you're going to have to make as an artist. You're going to have to go, go back and make some adjustments as, ne as needed. Okay, now what we're gonna do, we are going to put in, we're gonna put in the white fur and then we're gonna come back and highlight the nose and then we're gonna move on to the cloud. All right, so I have titanium white, which I need to get some more of my titanium white because I'm gonna be needing more of that. I'm gonna get some, put it right there. So I'm going to get titanium white. And I put a little tiny bit of yellow ochre, just a little bit. 
because I don't want it white, white, white. Because it's not white, white, white. There's reflections coming from all over the place. And then I'm going to go in and we're going to put these last layers of fur. Yay, look at that. That is so cool. And then when I come out and put me a little water so it can thin it out a little bit. And then when I make a little, make the little furs come off to the side. I'm going to try not to cover everything because we still want to keep the colors that we have underneath. This is just highlight. Okay, and his eye, he has his little tiny, he's got fur flu flipping up this way like that around his eye. And then he's got some coming down here. Definitely got some coming here. You can use a liner brush, but I'm telling you this angle brush performs miracles. Then he's got this part going up here. It's almost like he has a split in the middle up here, right here. And you got fur going one way and fur going the other way. You just got to take your time. And he's got. Almost like little eyelashes, but it's still fur coming this way around his other eye. And this one's coming like this. I'm going to start putting little swirlies. After I put these up here, it's kind of going straight like that. And then it goes. Now I'm putting some out here. And from time to time, I'll just let it flip off to the edge so it looks like its fur is flipping out. it up here. I hope all of you are following along or are going to plan on doing the painting. Also, um, if you have any suggestions of things you like to like to paint, just let me know. Because eventually I'm going to be doing a landscape painting series. I will keep you updated on that. some swirlies over here.
This dog kind of looks like he has kind of like a, I wouldn't say dirty or tainted, but just a fur that's got a lot of yellow and brown tones in it. Some more of that blue and white and burn umber. More white than anything. I'm going to get some more yellow ochre out. Probably going to put a little bit of um, burnt sienna in there as well. But right now I'm going to put together the yellow ochre, white, and a little bit of burnt umber. And the white. Because just a few minutes ago I mixed the, the wrong colors. More white than anything. So yellow ochre and white, that's what I'm mixing. Because I ran out. I'm gonna wipe some of that paint off my brush and then go back in here and just a little more white. I'm trying to swirl my, my brush. So put a little bit there and probably put a little bit here. Put a little here. We're trying to give an impression of what the dog's fur would look like. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to do the nose and the eyes. I'm going to put a little, come back and put a little bit of uh, burnt sienna right there because it's a little bit brownish underneath here. But let me go back and work on this nose and then the eyes. Okay, so the nose kind of comes out like this. And I want to put a little bit of white above it to give it dimension. So that's what I was shooting for last time. Just a little line. I'm just going to put a little line. I'm going to wipe off my paint. And I'm going to kind of dry brush that up so it'll look like it's faded to give it dimension. Just barely going over top of it. And that's the top of his nose. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some more of that titanium white. And I'm going to put a little bit more just to highlight it. Okay, I'm going to get my liner brush and I'm going to make his nostrils using the same white. So I'm going to get that. His nostrils kind of going. Like that. I'm just barely scraping the, the canvas. Because I want an impression of a of a nose. I don't want a hard edge. Put some more highlight on that nose. And then I'm the other nose. I think for the other nose, it's there. The nostril, you can not the other nose, but the nostril, you can see it in the painting, but it's not black. So I'm gonna mix some some ultramarine blue and some, I think I'm going to make some dioxazine purple with it. 
because I want it. I want to be able to see it, but I want it dark. Let's give it a go. I think I'm gonna use ultramarine blue. It's darker. More ultramarine blue than than burnt umber. See if it'll make a. This one will make it look like it's a faded nostril. <laughs> yep, that kind of looks like his little nostril right there. Because we want it to look like he has two, and I'm going to put, and not one, <laughs> and I'm going to put a little tiny white over top of that just so it'll stick out. Because wherever there's a dark, you need a light. Otherwise, neither one of them will show up. I'm just going to put a little, just a little, little bit there so you can see it. Barely, barely touching it. There. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to come around his nose because that way you can see it with the white highlights. He's got a cute nose. Remember, I promise you, if you can remember to put your lights and shadows where they belong in the correct spots, your paintings will look really nice. Okay, he's got fur kind of hanging down this way off his nose, so I'm just going to put some of that in there. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to do a little bit more here. Okay, put a little shadow. I'm going to put a little shadow on his highlight in his eye he actually had some fur coming here off of his eye okay I'm gonna put some burnt sienna in this part of the fur and then we're gonna move on to the clouds and then the rose and then we'll be done just need a little burnt sienna in here let's get some burnt sienna in yellow ochre More yellow ochre than anything. See, I'm mixing it right here. Yellow ochre, not that little piece. Yellow ochre and burnt sienna because that's a little bit too light. Let's put some um, burnt umber in there. Perfect. So burnt umber, yellow ochre, and burnt sienna because we need to come back here and put some little brown shadows in his fur more burn number there we go i'm just going to kind of put him here and there Because if you look at look at the picture, it's it's a little bit darker in this area. There's more brown, is what I mean. And then he actually has a little over here too. And some over here. All right. I'm so inclined to put some down here too. And then I'm sorry, I always like to add extra stuff. I just want to put a little bit of yellow ochre on the tip of these. Because the extra colors give the picture dimension. All right, yay. Okay, so now we're moving on to the cloud. Now keep in mind, you can always go back and add other things to your painting, and that's perfectly fine. But for the sake of time, 
we're going to move on to the cloud. All right, so for the cloud, we're going to start off with some, it's called zinc white. And zinc white is what it, what it is, it's a transparent white. Titanium white is more opaque and zinc white is transparent. And what I'm going to do, it start the tip of the, I'm going to do the cloud. The tip of the cloud starts right about, I'd probably say right about here. So I'm going to, it kind of flips right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to outline, outline my cloud, and then we're going to make it look like a cloud. So it kind of goes like that. I'm just going to make it come down a little bit more. I'm just outlining it. Let me clean off my brush because it's still has a little bit of yellow, still has a little yellow ochre in it. Okay, so here we go. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put some paint in that brush, and then we're just gonna kind of go use the tip and go like that. And I'm kind of barely touching it. And just grow in this swirly motion. And I'm not really going back picking up a whole bunch of paint because we know that clouds, they're kind of airy and light and fluffy, so we don't want them to be too, too heavy. So there's going to be like little pockets of less, where there's less paint. And what I will do is I will come back and highlight it with titanium white. So I'm just swirling around. Let me get a little bit more. Let me just swirl. I'm going to get some and just swirl around so it looks like a cloud. And I'm really, really scumbling with this brush. But don't press too hard because you don't want to rip a hole in your canvas. See, it's starting to look like a cloud that's shaped like a heart. Let me come down here and make the tip of the heart. Anybody can do this. So if you want to do a painting where you're making a whole bunch of hearts made out of clouds, here you go. And um, as I stated, keep in mind, when you are doing a painting that has a lot of detail, don't be so hard on yourself and thinking that, oh my goodness, it's taking me a long time to do that. Just produce something that you're proud of. And if you have to stop and take a break and come back to it, do that. That's perfectly fine. But some paintings just take longer than others. 
And I'll have some paintings that I have coming up. They'll be, they'll probably be nice and quick. They'll be fun, but they'll, they'll be a little bit quicker than this one is. I'm going to, I'm going to touch a little bit of my, my blue and put some of that blue. You know, actually I need to get some of the blue out. I'm going to use, um, a little bit of ultramarine blue, just a, a little touch. I'm barely going to tap it. I'm going to wipe most of it off wherever I can wipe it off at. I'm just going to come and put a little bit in here. You can barely see it. Get a little bit more. I don't want it to be overpowering, but I just want to um, put a little blue on the edges there, on this edge right here. And then I'm going to put some white highlights as well. Let me see. Wipe some of it off. There we go. More of a dry brushing technique as well. But I just thought it'd be pretty to have a little bit blue, a little bit of blue right there on that edge. I want to put some over here too. Sorry. Okay, now I'm going to get some white. Now, the white's really going to show up, so be careful with how you use it. So I'm just going to still use the, the edge. At the top, I'm going to go kind of heavy, but on the bottom, I'm just going to lightly touch it to blend it in. Real light. I'm going to come over here and put some over here. Make it a little bit more. So that way it actually looks like clouds. Get a little bit more paint on that brush. I'm going to put a little bit over there, over here. You can go crazy with this if you want, but I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to move on to the rose. Okay, there's our heart cloud. Let me put a little dot at the end of it. Just a little bit right there. All right, now to move on to our rose. We are almost done. Can you believe it? We have a little doggy. All right, so our rose, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the, the stem. And the stem goes through his mouth right here. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to mix some phthalo blue and some cad yellow medium. So I'm going to put my phthalo blue right here. Just, so, just, just know that your paint palette is going to be a complete mess. If you want to look all pretty and cute, I learned a long time ago when I first started painting that it's not going to happen. It is just not going to happen. Okay. So I'm going to mix really fast some phthalo blue and some yellow ochre. I mean some, uh, some cad yellow medium. And it gives this really beautiful, rich, rich green. Phthalo blue, cad yellow medium. And just to mute it back a little bit, I'm just going to put a little bit of burn umber. Okay. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to make my stem from here to there. And you're probably thinking you're going to go right over top of where 
his mouth is exactly you're gonna have to come back and put some fur over top of that and that's okay that's the stem okay so that's my stem I'm gonna go over it again make sure I got plenty of color on there all right so it will show up I am going to go and put um, a little bit of burn number on top of it. And then on top of that, I'm going to put, when it dries a little bit, I'm going to put some, some yellow, some cad yellow. That's to darken it up a little bit. I put burn number. I'm not cleaning out my brush. Now I'm going to put a little yellow ochre. I mean, I'm um, sorry, not yellow. Cod. Yellow ochre is on my mind. I don't know why, but it's on my mind. So I'm going to put a little bit of that cad yellow to bring out the highlight on this stem. And then after that, I'm going to get a little bit of yellow, cad yellow, and a little bit of white. Just a little bit. I haven't cleaned out my brush yet because I'm trying to keep those other colors inside of it. And then I'm going to come and I'm just going to put a little bit of extra more highlight on that. Wherever I think I, I would want to have it. And that's our stem. Isn't our stem gorgeous? On the tip right here, I'm going to mix together some burnt umber. some burnt umber and some white because I want to make a little I have to make the little end of the brush I mean the, the petal that's the end of it but I need to put, put a little yellow ochre in there so it'll show up I'm going to let that dry a little bit and come back and put some more of that burnt umber and, um, and white. So that'll show up as the, as the end of the petal. All right, I'm going to do the leaves. Here we go. I can mix some more. My paint kind of dried out a little bit, so I'm going to mix some more. So it's the cad yellow, cad yellow medium. It's the cad yellow medium, the thalo blue and a little bit of burn umber okay so there's a leaf right here and there is a a leaf right here and then there was a leaf here And then I'm going to put one right here. You can put as many as you want. And then there's a little tiny little edge right here. I'm going to go and do one. Okay. So I'm going to come around. I see some highlights. So I'm going to put, put the highlights where I see them. I'm going to dip this into my, my cad yellow. And I'm just going to put some highlights while it's still wet. Wipe off some of my paint. There's too much on there. Now I'm gonna get a little bit of white. Why that's still still wet. I'm just gonna come in and make the vein. On these leaves. Oop, that was a little bit too too thick. 
show you more highlights. Put a little highlight right there. All right, now I'm going to do my rows. See, look at that. We're probably going to make it, make it under two hours. That's pretty awesome. So, Tavia, if you had to paint a, a Valentine's painting, what would be your favorite? That's my niece Octavia on the on the the mic and the camera, everybody. I really she's like my camera. this dog one. She really likes this dog one. Which means she's probably gonna paint it. She's an artist as well. She's absolutely amazing. Very artistic. One of these days for, for all you know, she might do a tutorial. Okay. I'm getting ready to uh, do the rose. Hope you can see it. It's kind of small, the little doggy's holding a, a small rose. I'm gonna start with some naphthol red, and I'm gonna put some burn umber in it. You're probably thinking, you put burn umber in everything. Yes, I do, because it darkens things up, and it's perfect. Back to kind of like what we were talking about with the dog. You start with the darkest colors first, and then you put the light color over top of it. So that's why I'm mixing naphthol with burnt umber to make a dark version of this red, and then we're gonna come back and highlight it. I switched to my liner brush so I can get into these little spots. It's one part of the rose. And what I'm gonna use to highlight it is that I'm gonna use some cad red medium and some and some white so right now I'm just putting in the dark colors you know what let me go ahead and start putting in some highlights remember on our last video when we did a rose when we did a rose I told you that when you're doing flowers to do it in sections so that's what I'm gonna do to this one I've got my dark I'm gonna put my light you see me wiping off my paint onto my towel that's why I love using the towel okay so I put the dark red which was a naphthal and the burnt umber and then I put some cad and I'm gonna put a little bit of white over top of that CAD so it'll stand out. Remember that it's already starting to pop. It's because I put the white on. Okay, now we're going to the next section of the rose. I love roses. Roses, roses. Okay, now I'm going to the next section. I got to do this little petal down here. So let me do it. And as an artist, you can make those decisions. When you're painting, and if you see something that looks like it's off, go back and fix it. <laughs> Just add what you think, what, what, what do you think your, your eye is telling you? If it looks like it needs some more light, put some light in it. So I just put the dark, then I put the cad, now I'm putting the light, the white over top of that. I really want the rose to stand out so you can see it in the dog's mouth. Now I'm gonna do something that you're probably thinking, what in the world? I'm gonna get some, you know, actually I'm gonna get, I'm gonna mix some a doxazine purple and some, guess what? burn umber <laughs> to make me to make my shadow color for this rose because it needs some shadows more um i hope i said doxazine purple is doxazine purple and burn umber 
because in these little crevices right here, there needs to be a shadow. Cool, huh? All right, now we're gonna go into the next part. We're going to the next section of the rows, which is this part. Like I said, it's so much easier when you do it in sections. And I really should be ashamed of myself for, for doing this and not wearing my glasses. But we'll make do with what we have. You notice I keep doing the same pattern. I'm putting that dark, that dark red, and then I'm coming and putting cad red meeting over top of it, which is a more vibrant version of the red. And then I'm putting some white. And then when that's that's done, then what I'll do is I will put some of that burnt umber and doxazine purple mixture to make the, the shadow. I hope you're all enjoying the tutorial. You're going to love the, the next couple of ones I have um, for Valentine's Day. At least I hope you're going to enjoy them. I happen to like them. Tavia, my niece like Tavia, she's seen them. What do you think about them, Tavia? The upcoming uh, projects I have for Valentine's Day. What is your opinion? They're going to love them. Oh, I hear that. You're going to love them. There I go, I'm putting the, the shadow in there again because I have to separate the petals. Um, just a piece of information, and I may have re repeated myself, and that's, that's okay because I want to make sure the information is solid. That is very important for you to have your, your, your sh shadows and your highlights and it really makes all the difference in your paintings. It, it just really does. Like even when I do um, my digital painting, they don't start to look like anything until I really start putting those shadows and those highlights. I'm gonna spend a little bit more highlights on this. A couple more petals and we're done with the rose. Beautiful rose. I'm going to mix some more naphthol and my favorite color, apparently, burnt umber. Put some right here. And then I'll put this side over here. I know a lot of people have been asking um, about a live show because the first video, the first tutorial I did was live. And Octave and I were working on it. We, we want to perfect the equipment to make sure we have some awesome live shows. So those will be coming in, those will be coming in the, the next month or so. So if you can just hold on, we will be, we'll have some for you, some more live shows because they are kind of hilarious. So there we go, the same, same mixture, dark, medium, light. I have the dark red mixture, then the light red, which is the CAD, and then I have the white, and then the shadow that I'm gonna put to separate the petals. Everything is done in steps. 
Now I'm putting complete shadow right here because there's a big shadow right here in this section. And then I'm going to do another little rose petal. Kind of blend them out here. Put some more dark right here. Wipe off that brush. Dark right there. I'm going to use some doxazine purple for the darkness. And put a little dark right here. Then I'm going to get my highlight red, put it right here. A little white to highlight it. And you've got yourself a rose. Kind of cool, isn't it? I'm going to add one more detail to my dog and then we're finished. I still want to I'm just going to come in here and put some more of this dark in. I'm just scumbling in our color that we have of the, of the ultramarine blue and the doxazine purple and the burn umber. Because he had a couple of dark spots in here. And then I'm just going to mix some burn umber. Just some plain burn umber. Yeah, he looks more like a Ralph to me. And I need to do this anyway because we have to cover the rose. And I'm going to put a little bit of white over that because. And then we're just about done. his mouth in there a little bit of black so it will look like he had he actually has a mouth and he's holding okay all right let me do a little bit more highlights here for the fur and then we will be done finish finishing touches all right everybody well i hope you enjoyed it this is our puppy and rose acrylic painting tutorial day two of the 14 days of valentine day painting now i want to do something really fast before i forget sign sign it so i'm going to sign it and you should sign yours too Yay! Valentine's Day. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification button so you can be in the loop of things as to when the other videos are forthcoming. And my name is Katisha and thank you for tuning in to Kitty Co-Creations. Bye for now.